Welcome to the Daily Word for the season of Lent. Today's reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter eleven, verse forty-five to the end. Many of the Jews who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him, but some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the council and said, "What are we to do? This man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation." But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Said to them, "You know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed." He did not say this on his own, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but to gather into one of the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to put him to death. Jesus, therefore, no longer walked about openly among the Jews, but went from there to a town called Ephraim, in the region near the wilderness, and he remained there with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem. Before the Passover to purify themselves, they were looking for Jesus and were asking one another, as they stood in the temple, "What do you think? Surely he will not come to the festival, will he?" Now the chief priest and the Pharisees had given orders that any one who knew where Jesus was should let them know, so that they might arrest him. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord's thought in our word and deed. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. What is the situation? Why those Jews would believe in the Lord? What did they see? It was written in the first half of chapter eleven that Jesus raised a dead man, Lazarus, from the dead. The incident shocked those Jews and made them start to believe in Jesus's words. They even stated to believe that he was the Messiah that they had been waiting for so long. However, the chief priests. And the Pharisees were intimidated by what Jesus had done, and the Jews' reaction and comments on that, as shown in verses forty-seven to forty-eight, they called a meeting of the council on the matter of Jesus. They were not happy about Jesus might be the Messiah and the Savior that God sent to revive Israel. But rather showed concerns. They worried that the people would revolt if they perceive Jesus as the Messiah, and the Roman regime would take military actions that lead to the destruction of the holy place and the dispersion of Jews. The whole nation and religious community would be doomed. But I think they were more afraid of losing everything. People's hearts, then the land, fame, status, and authority, and even the temple, the source of their power and wealth. And one of them, the high priest that year, Caiaphas, even suggested handing Jesus into the Roman government and letting him be executed instead of all people suffering. If that worked out. They would not be crusaded against by the government, and the Jews could avoid devastation. 
In Caiaphas' point of view, keeping the Jewish nation is for the greater good, so Jesus must die, and his suggestion was the best solution. For Christians like us, Caiaphas' plan trying to use Jesus' death to save Jewish from devastation is an evil plot. However, men's evil plan cannot hinder God's plan of salvation. Brothers and sisters, we might have met someone who gives decent analyze on social, political or economic issues, or we would hear many logical sharing and suggestions in church. But we should pay more attention to are those analyses, suggestions, and sharing truly happened in a real life context? Are they truly believe in their suggestions? I think we should observe their word and also deed so we can witness their lives that what they believe are true before we give affirmation. Similarly, we should reflect on ourselves while we have discerned God's will and wish to share and even teach others. What do we bear witness to in our daily lives? Are we bearing witness to the kingdom of God or promoting ourselves? Let us have a time of reflection. Have you ever met someone who speaks decently and logically but with empty words? How do you feel about that? Have you ever shared a vision with others, but the plan ended in smoke? Did you feel the leading of the Holy Spirit at that time? Do you often review yourself if you are a good witness of faith? Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and ferret changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.